What's up, music makers? We are following up on one of our most popular YouTube videos on the music marketing strategies for 2018. So today we're gonna to be talking about the new promotion strategies for building your fans in 2019. And I'm here at Full Circle Music with none other than the genius, brilliant music marketer, Logan Crockett. How you doing, man? Hey, doing very well. Ready to get in and share some content and tell the people what's going on. It's been a year since we've chatted on it. We're gonna dive through maybe some differences and things that have happened since last year, but um, why don't you just address the elephant in the room before we go any further? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, we, we could talk about certain things that happened in 2019. Um, you know, if you look at recent changes, that really helps you address what's coming up, um, you know, right on the horizon. Um, you know, t typical things like, yeah, it seems like Facebook is sort of continuing to lose a little bit of popularity, you have rising ad costs, um, you have different players who tried to get into the space, um, Vero, uh, I don't know, all, all kinds of little things like that. One thing I found really interesting was um, the HQ app that got really big in, in 2018, where now they're taking this concept of like a, a group social media slash um, game slow show slash interaction. Um, and Explain it, to me and our and our uh, viewers what exactly that is. What so is, if what you is don't HQ? know what HQ is, um, it was an app that got really, really big. Um, you, you know something is big when someone tells you about it uh, that you're friends with in a local area and then you go back to a hometown and people are also talking about it. Um, that means it's truly spread. Uh, so, so HQ is basically this, it, it, it's literally a game show where you go on with your phone, um, and it happens multiple times a day and you basically answer trivia questions and you can actually win money at the end of it. Um, so it, it's this concept where, and the, the only reason I bring it up now is just because that is a, a trend that, that we definitely saw in, in 2018 where I think that. Um, I mean, just the streaming power that was required to make an app like that work was very significant. And I definitely think that we're going to see more and more of that, not necessarily in 2019, but as we move forward, um, 2020, 2021, we're going to see more and more ways to interact so directly with large groups of people. And I definitely think that that's going to hit on the music front. So just interesting to reflect back on a, on a few things that happened seeing how things are moving forward, progressing. But but I think that definitely, like you said, the elephant in the room, the, the biggest thing that we want to focus on, the biggest thing that's kind of taking over the world is, um, I, just, I mean, just streaming. streaming it, it's it's something that has, of course, been around for, for a hot minute. Um, but at the same time, uh, it is, its growth is, is to a place where it's like, okay, like, let's just take the gloves off or on or whatever that expression is. Um, gloves we'll off. Put on, it, we'll take the gloves <laughs> off. I think that's, I think you got the expression right. There we go. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's time to really, really go into this full force. Um, and if, if you're not into it full force yet, maybe, maybe it's put the gloves time on and time to get in the ring. I think that's yeah. more the analogy. So the big thing that I noticed, and this ties into what you're saying is voice. I've heard Gary Vaynerchuk talk about it. He's a brilliant marketer. If you, if you guys don't know his, his stuff, it totally applies to musicians. Um, but he's been talking about voice for the past couple of years, and I personally saw it close to home. My parents started using it this past year. And much love to my parents, but they're not the most tech-savvy people, even though they might, might say they are. I don't know. I don't know if they would or not. I know my mom will not say she is. But uh, if she owns a little Alexa dot and knows how to use it and is able to play stuff, then it means that the world is adopting that yep. <laughs> in my mind because when the non-tech savvy people of her generation, the older generations are getting on board, that um, kind of skips a step in, to getting them onto the platform from going from CDs to maybe they haven't jumped onto buying a Spotify account or an Apple Music account yeah. yet. Now there is literally no excuse because they don't have to do anything. They don't have to touch anything. My grandma can just get on there and say, Alexa, play so-and-so. Or Alexa, uh, they don't even have to know what they're asking for. They can say, Alexa, play a calming playlist. Or mm -hmm. um, Alexa, play um, you know my most listened to songs on Spotify. You can ask it anything virtually. My grandparents, after, after Christmas, um, they had actually already had one uh, Amazon Echo device. But, but after got Christmas, the they're, they're, now up to, they're now up to three. Okay. Um, so one that for way each they room. Like telecom between each other, and it's, it's helpful. Now. But, but all that to say is, yeah, like it, like it is being so widely adopted. And, and definitely, um, Amazon's been doing a really good job on the whole Echo front. 
Um, but but Google's re really playing hard too. Um, you know the the home Max is is continuing to be a big player for for music that's really competing more head to head with the home pod. Alexa um, on all the Amazon side that they released a, a subwoofer that can pair with your echoes now to really improve your your audio quality. Um, but then yeah, Google introduced the home hub this year, which is their video answer to to the Amazon Echo show. Um, and then you have um, Oh, over Black Friday, uh, like like that kind of whole period before Christmas got crazy. Um, I mean, pretty much everywhere you could go, and and they had uh, both Echo Dots and uh, Google Home Minis available for like twenty five bucks. Um, so so at that rate for that kind of technology, I mean, yeah, hot item, and basically. I mean, I sh I'm sure that as we move into you know Christmas, the whole holiday t uh, season, this coming year, I'm sure that you know those will continue to be hot items. But at the, but at a certain point, you got those so cheap now that it's like if if someone doesn't already have them, um, like there's I, no I, a price drop. Entry. A price yeah. drop isn't going. The price drop coming this year yeah. isn't going to incentivize. The, the only thing that's going to continue to incentivize people to jump on at this point is going to be pe uh, is going to be just continued peer pressure and, and just awareness, popularity word of, on, word of mouth. That's right. On that level. And it's driving streaming music consumption through the roof, which well, is and great me what, news. Tell me what musicians. you were talking about uh, your daughter in regards to. It. Yeah, well, I, I just even you look at our our house, and we're we're a little bit of an anomaly because we work in the music business, but we didn't listen to a ton of music in our house. Um, partially because of the convenience factor of like, well, you got to pull up your phone and tell it to play on this room in the Sonos, which was oh, already so easier hard. than it used to be. <laughs> already way easier than it used to be as opposed to putting a phonograph on. But now it's as simple as my daughter. Literally every morning she wakes up, wakes me up at like 630 and she goes in the bathroom and because we have a dot in the bathroom. She says, Alexa, play the Rise and Shine playlist on Amazon Music. And it plays over and over and over again in the background. And we never would have had that. Um, were it not for voice. It's just the ease and simplicity. It's one less mental step for people to go through because people... And so inevitably what's happening, and this isn't just Amazon. This is all the platforms. This is, mm -hmm. this is Apple. This is Spotify. This is YouTube or Google Music, kind of one and the same. This is Pandora. Um, they all have integrations now for you know Alexa, which is the entry level. It's $25, like yeah. you said, for the dot. So there literally is no barrier between people wanting to hear music and them hearing it. So streaming is going through the roof, which is great, great news for musicians, yeah. for record labels, really for the music industry as a whole. And everyone, I mean, yeah, I mean, just just little trends. I mean, it's interesting how you see this stuff close to home. But even th th this was the year again, you know, a Christmas correlation. But um, my sister, she's nine years younger than me. She's in her late teens, and th this was the year that she got. Spotify Premium, that was one of the top things on her list. And she's like, I want to move above the, the free tier. There, there's so many advantages towards, you know, having the having the, the paid option. And so so she's part of the statistic that, that that's pushing all of that up. And another, of course, big player, again, like you just said, um, Amazon, in terms of market share, Amazon does have, um, with all the smart speakers, they are the biggest. Um, and they, they do integrate with um most of the others, it was I think it was big news recently that that um, Apple Music is now supported directly through the Amazon Alexa devices or Amazon Echo devices. Sorry, um, but but also of course Amazon Amazon's in this interesting place because they want to cooperate with everyone and and you can like now you can literally go to. Um, I mean, hardware stores, but but definitely online, and you you can get light switches that um, that have Alexa inside of them. Like you can play yeah. music from your light switch. Your light switch can talk to you in yep. 2019. Yep, everything's integrated. Um, and so yeah, so it's, it's this weird world where yeah, so like it, Amazon wants to integrate with kind of every single thing possible, um, but at the same time, and, and so that means hardware, like all sorts of different devices, and that also means software because if they integrate with all the different music streaming services, that means really good things for them. But they're of course most interested in their own game. That's literally why these devices are so cheap. That's why Google's doing the same thing is because they want to get these devices in so cheap to your home, so that way you have this massive incentive to sign up for their platforms. Yeah. So. Um, you know, with especially with the new Google Home Hub, that's Google's hoping that that will drive things through with YouTube, um, and then with all these Alexa devices, all, all these different Echoes um, between all this range, all these range of products, 
um, Amazon is very much hoping that you sign up for Amazon Music, and they have had success with that. And so now, you know, where Amazon um, used to not be quite as much in the forefront of musicians' minds, it is definitely stepping closer and closer and closer. Just like, I mean, of course, Amazon a few years ago, you would never have thought um, Amazon for TV. I mean, maybe you could buy DVD box sets of your favorite right. TV show on Amazon. But now, but you would never Amazon have gone Prime, there. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and so that's that's what's happening is the consumption's going through the roof. It's great news for musicians, and we're gonna we're gonna touch a little bit on what can musicians actually be doing to ride that trend. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, I just wanted to show a quick chart, really quick, that we we found on this. But you can see in year 2013, um, we started at 106 billion streams. We we jumped up. You can see this is pretty exponential every year, but 164 billion in 2014, 310 in 2015, 432, 618, and we were at over 900 billion streams in, in 2018. So it's amazing how quickly the industry is shifted. And really, there's kind of five big players that have emerged. So do you want to touch on what those are? Just because I know it can be a little bit overwhelming for musicians thinking about, man, there's all these platforms. How do I even, like, what do I even focus on? Like, yeah. and, and there are so many of them out there, but we really just want to kind of emphasize five. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of p- different people want to want a piece of this um, this music streaming pie. Uh, but, but, the, but the big five, you, you definitely, of course, have Spotify. In terms of market share, they are the biggest, and that's because they do have a strategy that's arguably working for them. Spotify, to my knowledge, is still having some profitability issues. Um, but they, they're definitely doing something right as far as getting the people on board through having a free tier. Um, a lot of the others don't have that in the same kind of model. Um, so, so Spotify worldwide is, is definitely the biggest. Um, and then the, a lot of the other huge players, um, of course, you have Apple Music, um, you have Pandora's. Pandora's been shifting kind of what they're doing for, for a little while now, but, but they're still a pretty big player in the space. You definitely have Amazon, like we just talked about. Um, and you have um, YouTube Music. That, that, that's interesting where yeah, I'd kind of, Google Play was a thing, and then YouTube keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. People go, I mean, YouTube is the number one place for music videos, and so yeah, then YouTube started YouTube Red, which is a way to get rid of ads on YouTube, basically, sure. and get premium content. Uh, now they're, they're integrating all that into music. And so, so yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure, I haven't done a ton of research on this recently, but I'm pretty sure that the model is moving towards Google Play Music going away and YouTube Music taking over because, of course, YouTube is owned by Google. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll probably have this conversation again in 2020, and maybe there will be, you know, people who, companies that pull ahead, companies that rebrand, and maybe another company in the in the um, game, maybe one of these companies will go away by that point. But but yeah. these are the five that I would kind of definitely look into right now yeah and so again just to kind of reiterate them for everybody youtube music we've got spotify we've got apple we've got Mm -hmm. amazon and we've got pandora and i would say that um i'm part of the reason for for growth too is you of course have to have support behind the industry if the industry didn't want this to succeed i mean i mean there's nothing forcing us to, to actually put music on these platforms um, but but it does seem like I mean you just showed the chart with how much it's been growing and it does seem like um, overall uh, labels are becoming th- there's more and more and more money coming to labels due to streaming now to the point where they're probably more comfortable uh, initially you know anytime there's change in an industry it's it's shock it's hard it's it's hard to accept change but but labels are now to the point where okay it's like everything used to be about these music downloads before that of course all cd sales um but i I, is it safe to say that they're kind of coming to a point where it's like okay streaming we're comfortable with this now well and and we don't really have a choice it's not whether we're comfortable with it it's what's best for the consumer ultimately uber is way better for the consumer than taxis the same with streaming streaming is way better and way more convenient for the consumer than purchasing a physical product that's an old conversation it's also more convenient for the consumer than even purchasing a digital download of it so i i I think the quicker that you as a music maker can get the notion of people owning your music out of your head the sooner you're going to be successful Mm -hmm. so i think that's where we're at um i would say you know it's easy to get analysis paralysis for all of us of like well what what should we even focus on so my advice of 
which ones to kind of focus on in the beginning would be Spotify and YouTube. And that's not to say they're better than any any of the others. It's just that Apple Music doesn't at this time even have official uh, uh, user curated playlists. Mm -hmm. uh, Pandora is very algorithmic. And Amazon is is a whole other beast. So. so so especially for like an independent artist, because of course we have a great relationship directly with Apple Music, um, but that's because you know we're we're um, you know established on, on the record label front. So I, I definitely think. Um, well, we'll t we'll talk about that yeah. here in a little bit. But how how do songs even get added to these official playlists? But but for the purpose of independent musicians. I urge people to start with just really digesting and learning YouTube music and Spotify. So we talked about a lot of, we started off this video discussing a lot of the reasons why streaming is big because we want to make sure that, you know, the people watching this understand that, yeah, like we need to get on board with this. Um, again, mo honestly, most people um, who are watching this hopefully already have at least music up on those platforms. Um, but but there's a lot of additional things that, that people can do, um, you know, 2019 moving forward to actually, you know, in, increase their engagement, increase what they're doing. It's great. Okay, so like Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, they're all really important. That's awesome. So, you know, I'm an independent artist, um, say like, so so what do I what do I do about this? What do I as an independent artist do myself to actually take advantage of the fact that, you know, streaming is this huge behemoth that I need to sell my soul to don't sell your soul to it but yeah it kind of so <laughs> let's talk about some very maybe tangible strategies that people can put can use tactically to to uh drive the needle on streaming and i, I want to jump around a little bit and, and i just want to i, I want to get get this out in the open it is very very hard as an independent artist to land on the radar of some of the major Spotify curators, mm -hmm. especially in the mood playlists. A lot of a lot of us listen to playlists maybe based on our mood, whether it's chill or party or um, songs for the weekend or whatever like that. A lot of those are populated based off of content and catalog and songs that have already worked. And so it makes people think less and feel more because they already kind of feel familiar with the songs. So that's not to say they're unachievable. They're just they're they're the highest hanging fruit, so to speak, and and you touched on it a little bit. It, it's all direct relationship. The people who curate the main playlists on any of the platforms are exactly that. They're people. Um, so you might call them the new gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. So number one, do the best job you can. It's the reason why you know labels uh, just like ours place so much priority on trying to serve these curators and, and, to, and to cultivate genuine relationships with them. Now, for Spotify specifically, it's not an option. There really is only one way to get your music on the radar of the official Spotify playlist curators, and that is through their um, artist uh, submission tool. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But um, so that's kind of the the big the big thing to get out of the way. Apple Music's the same way. It's it's literally a person, and chances of landing on those are maybe maybe that's your step 10 but you've got to do steps one through yeah. nine before you can even kind of think about that um so maybe we could maybe we should talk about the uh just some of the spotify tactics um number one there's a spotify for artists app a lot of people don't realize that but there is it's an absolutely great platform um i'll just show it to you guys it's it's both on the iphone so we'll just scroll over to that on my screen. It's both on the iPhone. This is Madeline McDonald, who I picked one of our artists who is newer and literally has only released two songs just to sh show you guys the power of what, what this thing can do. So um, this is the app. It's obviously got your main page. It's got your analytics. It's got your settings. Just clicking through these. Um, you can see that. And this was this is in a matter of, you know, probably less than a month. She went from virtually zero to 21,789 monthly listeners. And those are real listeners. Um, so that's pretty good. She's got her singles. And then you notice there's this little blue check mark right, right up here at the top. Um, that's what it means to be verified. Now she got this before she even had 
you know, maybe a thousand monthly listeners. So it's not impossible to get. It's really, really good thing to do. It's just a best practice for artists to do that. And and there's a process on the Spotify FAQ page that walks you through exactly how to do that. So get that out of the way. Is, the, is that just something that lets uh, like fans know that you're legit? Yeah, that you're the official artist. This is the official artist page. Are there like artists that are trying to fake that they're someone else? I mean, they <laughs> they, they can be. It's, it's just like um, fake social media accounts, you mm-hmm. know? I mean, people are having to do takedowns, and those happen every day for... for famous celebrities you know i mean um so it's kind of the same principle just getting get, go ahead and get verified um the other thing that i would say uh is is learn the ins and outs of the artist app because it has things like artists pick so for instance and so real quick with this artist app um yeah. do you, can you like like to get the artist app first of all you have to be an artist or, or be in control of an artist. Like, we are not Madeline McDonald. Yes, but. you're either a manager, a label, an agent, or somebody who represents an artist, or the artist themselves. And so, and then, in order to, quote, be an artist in Spotify's eyes, like, do you have to have music on Spotify first? Or can you get this set up when you're planning your first release, for instance? You you do have to have music on the platform, okay, yes. so get at least can, one song yes. of some sort out there, and then at that point, you can go ahead and get their app. Yes. So so exactly. this this is applicable. I'm sure that there are actually a lot of people watching this. You know, you've written some songs, you've figured some stuff out, but you haven't actually released your own music yet. So this is this is an action step that, well, there's a step before it, which means step one is release some music. If you haven't gotten there, to just, just get that step out of the way. It's really good to learn how to do that, figure that out. Um, get your feet wet in that, um, you know, even if no one listens to it, at least you figured out that process. Yeah. And then step two, get the set. So again, Spotify best practices, promote your concerts or feature music at the top of your profile. I can just walk you through this right now. It's really simple. They make it a no-brainer. Even if you're not a tech person, you can choose which song you want to feature on there, um, you know, and just write it down. Check out my new single. And then that will be what features at the top. Um, you can use the ad, you know, without an image, you can do all that. Um, concerts are huge. You know, people are obviously on, on Spotify because they want to know about you as an artist and about your music. They're not just scrolling through Facebook. So take advantage of that. If you got concerts coming up, uh, Madeline's not really doing a lot of touring right now, so she doesn't have concerts on her page. This is one thing that, um, she is working on right now. And I recommend all artists do this, but you can create your own artist playlists on Spotify and, post them to your page it's just another way for fans to get to know you what music are you inspired by maybe you have your top 20 song favorite songs of all time maybe that's an artist playlist or um things that fit with your style of music and you can kind of integrate your songs in there as well too so that's a best practice um and then kind of cycling off of this screen here another thing i would say for uh for artists and for musicians is just to reiterate the, 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 the only fast way to see a spike in your plays is to get on a playlist. Um, the other way, and I want to show you I want to show you another side of things. We work with Madeline McDonald, who I, uh, I mentioned, but we also work with an artist named Matt Hammett. and this is our label portal on our distribution. This is and, called and so Madeline, Madeline is a brand new artist that we're working with. She Prior to us, she hadn't had any music on Spotify. Hadn't released anything, like that. anything. Now, Matt is a different situation where, you know, sometimes our labels kind of deal in two different worlds when it comes to artists. Either A, you, quote, discover someone or someone comes to you, you end up in some sort of relationship and you build an artist career from the ground up. Or B, um, artists switch labels all the time. Yeah. So, like, there's um, you, you've kind of already become established, and then for one reason or another, all kinds of different business reasons, you may end up with a different label and one point in your career than the than the label that you started with. And so that's the case with Matt, where he used to be he he has already put out music prior to working with us. Yes. So really, the two ways are playlists and algorithms. So Matt. The algorithm is going to favor artists who have been on the platform and have a lot of music on the platform because it has other things to keep people engaged. If they listen to a Matt Hammett song, they can play him another Matt Hammett song or something similar to Matt Hammett. Um, so that's ultimately, just to show you an example, so this is our page on AWOL, which is our distributor. This song, Like Arrows by Matt Hammett, um, we literally spent zero dollars in promotion and it's gotten th- close to 400,000 lifetime streams. That's just on Spotify. That's not counting his video on YouTube. That's not counting Apple Music. 
Um, and it's just amazing to see the algorithm start kicking in. So you can see editorial means actual playlists, 12% means engaged, which is people that have saved it, hit save on Spotify. That's what you want to be encouraging your fans to do is to hit the save button. Um, that means they're engaged. And then 86%, that's a huge number, is other. And that's the algorithm. So the reason why I wanted to show you that and, and the reason why I also wanted to show you, um, you know, Madeline McDonald, who is just starting out, you're going to have to look at this as a long haul. Um, with Madeline, you can see it, 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 the opposite is true. It's 88% editorial on Spotify. 7% um, is coming from algorithm, which is better than it was, which was one <laughs> or zero, and 5% is engaged. So that's that's about what you're going to expect being a brand new artist. Don't be discouraged. Um, we even had conversations with her when we put out the first first song. Hey, listen, this is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. Do not expect it to blow up overnight. You are going to start with getting dozens of streams, not thousands. And sometime, you know, we, we hope and we pray that we can, we can land you on a playlist and that's kind of the fast track. But if not, then just be in it for the long haul and be willing to just put out a lot of music, not see it do anything for a while. And eventually something's going to work and then it's going to trick the algorithm into showing it to showing the rest of your music, um, to the, to the user. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'm doing a good, good enough job explaining that. <laughs> Um, so that's that's kind of uh, you know Spotify, um, and, and you you mentioned something about like a submission tool. Yes. Um, uh, so if if I'm an independent artist and I want to actually again like just because you submit something through this tool does not have any sort of guarantees. It's just it's literally your only option if you even want to be considered. Yes. If you want to be considered for a Spotify playlist, an official Spotify playlist, there's only one way to do that, and it's through their artist submission tool on the artist portal on the app. Um, so what you do is you, you upload it through your distributor. We can talk a little bit about even what their their favorite distributors are. You can find them right on their FAQs page on Spotify. Um, they they recommend using the Orchard. They really like DistroKid a lot. Um, so those are some good options you can use. TuneCore is not listed on there, surprisingly enough. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I think they feel like through the Orchard and through DistroKid, they provide better quality metadata that's more consistent, and that's important. Um, so the only way to get featured on an official Spotify playlist is through the submissions tool. And that's and that then gets entered into the system. And obviously, like anything, it's up against everything else that gets entered. But if you don't do that, you literally will have 0% chance of getting on. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. So um, Spotify and, submission tool. And, and we'll, we'll include, like below this video in the description, we'll include tons of links, resources. So we'll, we'll get you to a lot of these pages that we're talking about. Um, the other thing you can do with Spotify and with YouTube, which is why I said these are the two that I think independent artists should focus on, is you can contact, um, let's call Spotify the big fish. You can contact the small and the medium-sized fish. There's nothing... Well, when you say you Spotify, you, you don't mean like Spotify as a platform. You mean like the top playlist, the, the top curated playlist on Spotify. Yeah, just if you, if you go to the Spotify app and search, you know, country music, you'll see dozens and dozens and dozens of playlists some of them may have five followers yeah. some may have forty thousand followers um there's nothing saying you can't contact that playlist curator uh, whether that's through social media we've used that strategy um, when we were starting out as a label and it, it helped us get onto a playlist um that's curated by a guy that had i think forty thousand followers on his at the time and that that moves the needle um so treating them like vips you know and mm -hmm. nowadays not that we legally advise this. In fact, we legally do not advise this, but <laughs> there are even Spotify curators out there who are accepting, you know, payola mm -hmm. to get on a, play a playlist. So that, that does exist. If that's the route you want to go, we've never done that They've, as a label. Yeah, like, like a, a lot of Spotify curators have realized, Oh, like we are important because we have this distribution channel, this way for people to discover music, and not the official Spotify curators. Yeah, these yeah. are, these are third parties. These are independent, independent people who use the Spotify platform to make a place. And for whatever reason, they, they were successful at making that place popular. And then, so yeah, just like, you know, our label, independent artists, artists everywhere. Um, it really helps to get on these playlists. And so these, a lot of playlisters are having a lot of messages come at them and they're like and, and some of them have kind of seen the dollar signs and they're like oh well i could um you know charge so, money for this but so yeah it's paying them is an option but it's a shady option yeah and 
you the, the last thing you want to do is have Spotify itself pull your profile down. They they can do that if they see you're using shady tactics. Um, it does happen though on a very frequent basis. So that those are the those are what we would call the medium sized fish. Gotcha. So so that is definitely an option. Like like if if you're an independent artist, um, you may like you're probably gonna have to contact a lot. Some of them are probably gonna tell you. Don't accept anything that isn't paid, but 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 if if it is definitely a numbers game, right? If you contact enough of them, and if you have quality music, um, then you know hopefully someone will buy it. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the, what what are the numbers looking like? Well, really quickly, just kind of as a rule of thumb, if if you own the master, if you own the recording, whether you're the artist that releases it independently, or you're a label or a publisher who's putting it out, you can pretty much count on about five thousand dollars coming in per million streams. And that's no. for the person who owns the master, who actually exactly. owns the, the music that they're putting out. Yeah, so if you put it out on DistroKid and you accumulate a million streams, that'll equate over time. You know, it's it's small payments at a time, but it'll usually end up adding up to somewhere around $5,000. Um, and songwriting is even less than that. So for about a million streams, you can count on a total of about $750 coming in currently um, to the songwriters. Now, that's obviously split up between the various writers, if there's multiple writers on a song, which is super common nowadays, and, and their publishers as well, too, if there's a publisher. And so those are technically royalties. Those are royalties. Those are songwriting royalties. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that, I, I don't really want to cover too much more than that, but those those are kind of the rough yeah. rough numbers we're looking at nowadays. So so that that's helpful. Of course, um, you know, Spotify, all these streaming platforms, they are actually a... a tool that you know does fund the music industry and actually pays out uh to music creators um but but the other side is you know even even forget that yes it would be great to get a million streams get that five thousand dollars if you own the song um but on the other side too the, the other huge advantage is hey if you get on this playlist if you get people to follow you on spotify if you know whatever you can do to actually get people listening to your music um that's also people who didn't know about you before exactly. um it, it's also a marketing tool to actually you know expand your reach and just grow the the amount of people who even know that you exist yeah and that that's really great too now now what about um so so obviously we, we can do that through streaming platforms we can you know grow our fan base through streaming platforms um and and make money through it but um what about radio we've been talking so much about streaming um like does with, with this grow i mean you you showed that graph at the beginning with how much streaming is growing does that kind of displace radio or, or how is how are things on that front i literally don't want to spend more than 15 seconds on this because for most independent artists and even signed artists it is irrelevant it's, it's not not irrelevant but it's unattainable so mm -hmm. i don't want to have people focus on something they can't actually control I want to get to the things that they can can actually control. Now, that being said, radio is still alive and well. A lot of people think it's dead, but it is still the number one music discovery tool for new artists, and that's over streaming, over anything. Um, I'm still sh kind of shocked that that's, that that's reality, but that's why major labels are still having all their eggs in that basket because it still moves the needle. That being said, I don't want you as an independent artist to focus on it because it's an expensive game, you have very little chance of winning at it, and it's something like we were talking about. Maybe it's your mm -hmm. chapter ten. Let's focus yeah, if on you, chapters if you one build, through nine. If you build your reputation, if you build what you're doing as an artist through some of the, these more grassroots methods, starting with the playlist, which are a little bit more attainable, for instance, um, maybe you know eventually you probably do need a label partner to to truly get on radio outside of certain. And you can hire um, independent promoters. I'm just I I am discouraging. 99 percent we've of heard people some people try that and it tends to not work out as well as they hope. for independent yeah. artists it doesn't because you don't have the volume of work that you're leveraging to get priority placement because you're one of many you mm -hmm. know and, and labels can hire these same independent independent promoters to work on their behalf and of course they're going to get better placement so 99 percent 99.99 percent of people watching this don't even worry about that i would say scratch that off your list unless you just have uh, an enormous amount of money that you want to flush down the toilet. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so for for a lot of the artists um, and musicians who are watching this video, you know, one of the best steps that they can take 
um, is is a to just get involved with the streaming platforms. Um, definitely, especially Spotify and YouTube are the probably the ones that you can control the best. That, that you have the most impact in over the outcome and what you can actually build there. And the other thing um, I I don't, I don't want to gloss over this. We're gonna we're gonna get into social media here in a minute, but the last kind of best practice on this on the platforms is if you get added to something, shout them out on your socials. Mm. I mean, we recommend like every time you. Every time you put out music, make it part of your release rollout on your social media platforms or your email list or however you're communicating with your fans that, hey, go to X, Y, or Z playlist. Even if you're not on their playlist, give them shout outs and say, hey, man, you know, um, Jason, I like Jason in Texas, <laughs> I, I love your playlist. Just think, just kind of think relationally and think organically. That, that's that's uh, one thing that when you do get on the radar of curators and people that have playlists they actually really like to see that even if you don't have a massive amount of followers they like to see that you are prioritizing them on your platforms so in regards to streaming um go ahead and a put music out there in the first place um b you know download the app get the tools uh to to sure up everything and make sure you're verified make sure your profile looks good make sure you're submitting the right pictures um do all that stuff make yourself look like a pro and then um and then try and get do do what you can to get on these different playlists. Um, you know, get with different curators, um, make your own playlist, and then also it. And then also be aware that it is a bit of a numbers game, and the algorithm that you were talking about. And and um, you know, th- this is how Spotify works. But but for the most part, most of these other companies work in similar ways, especially regarding algorithms. Um, but as time goes on and you put out more and more and more quality songs, it increases the chances of you having more, yes. quote, organic discovery exactly. through the algorithm. Exactly. So, so those are kind of the steps. Um, to, to just you know, reiterate what those are. Uh, those are the steps that, um, in regards to streaming, that, that you should take. Exactly. Um, now we're going to move on to something off of streaming for, for a moment. Um, because another thing, you know, it, it's it's been relevant for for years, pretty much all, all throughout the 2000s so far, um, and it's going to continue to be relevant um, for for musicians. And that is, well, when when people kind of click on videos like this, and you know, they're like, oh, what kind of new strategies can I learn, you know, in a new year uh, to market myself? A lot of the times that they're thinking about social media, and so we definitely don't want to leave you hanging in the social media department. There are three things um, moving into 2019 that I really think that you want to pay attention to. Um, number one is not necessarily thinking about a new social media platform, um, but I would say that um, the whole concept of stories has really, really, really taken off. Um, of course, uh, Snapchat popularized it, Instagram kind of cannibalized it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's interesting because now you know you have these other platforms that are continuing to push it and make it bigger. Um, so, so it's not so much a new, it's a, not a new social media platform, but rather it's a new method of using social media across different platforms. So that means there are stories on Facebook, Instagram, there's still Snapchat. Um, the biggest, uh, most recent player that I've been fascinated to see stories come from, I don't even know if you've seen this, have you noticed that there are stories on YouTube now? I have not even seen that. So yeah, so YouTube, um, assuming that you're, you know, you follow some different YouTubers, uh, you're on some different, um channels through YouTube. If I, I believe it's only on their mobile versions of the app. You can't find it on desktop. Um, but if you go on the mobile app and you scroll through, you're, you're actually going to notice two things now um, that you wouldn't have noticed uh, a while back, which is you're going to see posts, just like social media posts, where it's not a video, but it's a YouTuber, a YouTube channel that's actually making like a text post. And maybe like they have a poll or maybe it's just an announcement or something like that. But they're actually making some sort of quote social media post. And then the other thing that you're seeing now is stories. YouTube does do it in a little bit of a different way. I think it's part of a play to just make it feel like there's more content there right now. But um, a lot of these other companies do stories for 24 hours. YouTube's stories uh, last for up to five days. Mm. Um, but, but it literally feels just like Instagram. Um, how, how it all moves through. Uh, so, so they're all trying to compete with each other. So, so all that to say on the stories front, um, the, the biggest thing there is just, hey, pay attention to stories. I know a lot of musicians who are still thinking about posting strategies, thinking about all this other stuff, and that's good, but, but stories is here. Stories is here to stay. Stories is big, and if you are not on your stories game, I would encourage you to find some other um, people who use stories really, really well. Follow them. Um, and see what seems to be working for them and just 
copy some of their ideas, honestly. Um, another simple strategy you can use is literally Google, hey, you know, how can I get better at Instagram stories? Um, and you're gonna find tons of articles about ways to, to improve on that front. So I would highly encourage you to prioritize stories. And then that's kind of leads directly into the second big thing I wanna talk about, which is, I just mentioned YouTube now has stories, YouTube now has posts. It's interesting because well, when Google Plus first came out, what did you think about Google Plus? I didn't give it the time of day. <laughs> I did give it the time of day when it first came out. I was like, oh, Google's trying this whole thing. They're really going to try and you know get Facebook. Um, obviously, they failed. Yeah. Um, actually, Google just in 2018 announced the official closure of Google+. Plus. It, mm. it is still a it's thing. about time. It is still a thing, <laughs> but it is, it, is, um, it is going to be closed, sure. um, I believe, within the coming months. Um, so, so Google has officially held up their white flag on that front, and they're like, all right. No more, um, no more with Google+. Plus. But I'm 100% convinced that that does not mean that Google is out of the social media game. I don't think that they want to be out of the social media game for a second. I think that what has happened, and it's the same thing because we were talking about streaming before and how they used to have you know a lot of emphasis on Google Play Music, but now all of a sudden then came YouTube Red, and then you know, you know you, Google has seen so much success around YouTube. Um, and so now they're like, forget Google Play Music, it seems, and let's focus on YouTube music. And now that's their actual streaming platform that you pay money for and you stream music through what is called YouTube music. And it seems like because YouTube continues to have more and more success, YouTube continues to grow, more and more people continue to use YouTube. Um, it, it, it definitely seems like YouTube is or that Google, who owns YouTube, is really trying to leverage YouTube as their social media platform of the future, which is why, like I just said, you can now do posts directly through YouTube. You can now do stories directly through YouTube. Um, so, I mean, it, you know, there's been no like official announcements or anything about it, to my knowledge, but it seems like YouTube is definitely trying to actually play their hand at what can we do to steal as much market share away from Facebook as we can. And Facebook's in the game, too. <laughs> Facebook is trying to get more video focused. Everyone, like all the stats say, you know, in the, in the 2020s, things are going to be so video centric as companies build tools that make video easier and easier and easier. More and more and more people are going to prefer to communicate through video, especially on social media. And that's why everything's like, you know, in the 2020s, video, 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 video. That's why Facebook's trying to get big on video. That's why YouTube has the huge advantage because they're already all about video. And now if they just play, you know, put in a few interesting little features, add a few things here, um, you know, there, there's a chance that they could really take a successful stab at Facebook. Um, so all that to say, first of all, practical steps for musicians. If you don't have a YouTube channel, my goodness, start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, engage with people on YouTube. Well, the, the new features that we were just talking about, post stories, um, there might be subscriber thresholds you have to hit in order to get that. Fine, get, build your channel, get those subscribers, do whatever you need to do to build your YouTube channel, um, and then play around with those new features I was just talking about, the stories, the posts, and make YouTube a hub for what you're doing because YouTube... You, no one can see the future, but but if I had to, if I had to put my money on a channel that is going to just continue to do really, 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 really well, no matter what, I think YouTube's going to continue to go up. Everyone's talking about Facebook going down, um, and that doesn't necessarily mean it's true. It's just kind of what the rumblings are, sure, more or less. So yes, the takeaway for musicians is take advantage of YouTube, get to know it, dive in. Logan, what is the third strategy we want people to take away? So I would say at this point um, in 2019, in regards to social media, um, there actually is a lot of opportunity to have a lot of organic, um, still have a lot of people learning about you organically. When you post, if you're doing the right things, you get a lot of organic reach if you know what you're doing. But a lot of people are complaining, oh, if I don't pay money, it's hard to you know get enough eyeballs on my stuff, whatever. Um, and and I am definitely to a point where it's like, look, if, if you know the right strategies, um, you can 100% do a really good job without spending a cent on social media platforms. And some of them, like Instagram um, and YouTube, uh, still go still cater really really well to um, that whole idea of organic traffic. I think that the biggest um, the biggest exception to that is Facebook. There's still a lot of organic reach on Facebook, 
But I do think, okay, 2019, um, this isn't for the person who's literally just getting into music and hasn't put a song out yet. But if you do have music out there, if you're at all serious about, you know, making this a business, if you're a musician, you're a business, you're an entrepreneur, this is what you do. Um, businesses require investment. And I'm just at the point where my advice to musicians is that if you want to do real things on social media, you got to commit five or $10 a week to posting or to, to rather, I, I don't like saying boosting posts because I discourage people from using Facebook's boost me method. I would encourage people to do a little bit more research into actual Facebook advertising um, and use their um, their actual advertising platform where you actually go into an ad account and build an ad out, ad out that way. I mean, you can still do that with one of your posts. Um, but, but, the, but the principle here is, um, A, again, don't, don't just do the boosted posts. Um, do a little bit of research on it and actually figure out you know, the best strategies for pushing posts. But then B, the, the, the big thing is just commit to the ad spend. If you don't have five to ten dollars a month, um, or sorry, five to ten dollars a week to to spend on something like this, um, the costs are going to add up no matter what direction you go. And if you, if you want to avoid that, you're, there's so much time, effort, money you have to spend on other things between merch and touring and making this music and gear and like, like money is going to fly out of your pockets in all kinds of different directions for all kinds of things. I think that this is one of the best uses of money, a small budget. You can use more, but, but have at least a very small budget. Um, just to, I, it, if you do that in, for most of you, it, it could exponentially increase the amount of people who are seeing your posts, um, on a weekly basis. Sure. And so, so I think that that is a lot of the magic that a lot of musicians are missing out on. So yeah, budget, you know, five to $10 a week. It's not, it's not, not anything that any of us can't sacrifice a cup of coffee at Starbucks for, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, so how can we approach all of this? See, I mean, a lot of this is very hard um, between all the streaming stuff we were talking about, all, between all of you know these the social media strategies. It's so much easier said than done. I do think it takes a lot of grassroots strategies. Again, like we were talking about radio, it's like think about the first chapters of this journey. Don't think too far ahead because if you do that, you're it's going to be too hard to get there. You need to start at the easier steps. Um, but I honestly think you know I just said being a musician is a business. Um, you're an entrepreneur. Um, and, and I 100% think that, um, you would be the first to say that one of the biggest, um, bottlenecks challenges towards any business, we're certainly trying to run a business around here, um, is this idea of time and resource management and uh, literally using the word resource. I think time is probably your most valuable resource. And so how do you use that? best as possible and how do you keep track of it and how do you officially manage that we, we say pay attention to streaming we say pay attention to youtube you know take time to learn advertising how do you actually make that happen instead of just saying oh that's nice i should go try that yeah so i, I agree a thousand percent the most important thing when we're talking about things that that are viewers and our listeners can actually control time is the biggest one you can control what you do with your time and I believe in this so much and that, that time is money regardless of whether you're mm -hmm. hiring something or it's it's just lost opportunity cost. Time truly is money. And I believe in this so, so much that one of my resolutions in 2019 was to track my time and see where does it actually go because I've read countless studies that, that say people can identify, yeah, this is what I did this week or this is what I'm going to do next week. 99% of the time, they're way off. People think they're being way more productive than they actually are. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. that inspired me to buy this little device that I've actually been using. It's been tracking me the entire time we've been doing this video. It's called Timular. What? What? Uh, what uh, so the, there's like what eight different sides to this. So so what side has it been on during this? So I've had it on FCMA, which stands for Full Circle Music Academy. What we're doing right now is creating academy content for students to learn about the music business. Okay. So I've had it sitting on this. Um, after this, I'm going to hop into a writing session and I'll flip it to this one. Um, that's I, I just have it. It's, you can write on it whatever you want. You can erase it. C equals WPM. For me, that's my, my goal of achieving a number one country song. So I'll flip it over to that as soon as we're done. But it automatically tracks. It links right to your smartphone. Mm -hmm. It can give you little reports actually this would be a good so, yeah, thing so, so, so just to be clear because it might be hard to translate this immediately over video but but this isn't just some sort of like toy or cube or something cute just to kind of have because because sometimes 
you know, those, those things are nice. But like, this is actually a legitimate. This tracker. is a legitimate. Like, like this tool. isn't just a, a piece of plastic. That thing actually, depending on what side you have it on, literally tracks what you're doing. Well, our our, our video producers will, will show you exactly what it is. I'm I'm on my phone. You can see the app. Um, this is this is what it is. It's it's. I, I just flipped it over, so it started again. But you can see it's on Academy right now. Um, this is what I did yesterday. This is what I did Monday. And then you can go to your summary view so you can see um, what is actually taking up your time. So I highly recommend whether you go this route and it's it's a hundred dollars, or you can I think pay six dollars a month or something to that effect. But I highly recommend whether you do that or get a notebook and take it around mm -hmm. with you, that might be the number one best action step for, for a lot of our viewers right now is, is the metric, the biggest metric that you can, can control while you may have a hard time getting on a Spotify curated playlist, you can control what you do with your time. And let's talk about maybe some of our recommendations for what they should do or could do with their time. Okay, yeah, because it's one thing to say, oh, I'd love to get on a playlist, but how do you actually use your time to leverage that goal? Um, yeah. So, yeah, so, so, so what are some, what are some ways that like, okay, so say I have three hours today that I can spend doing something as an independent artist. What, what are some things I can actually practically do with those three hours that can help me move the needle towards these goals? Well, this is, this is a great way to close out the video because I want to leave people with action steps. Number one, um, if your goal is to get on a playlist, it's the, the, the measure of success that you can control is a conversation with a playlist gatekeeper. Conversation can mean you shooting them an email. It can mean you messaging them on socials. It can mean you having a physical conversation with them if you know them and if, if you're in town with them. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a text message. Just a, any form of a conversation. That is a very controllable metric. Um, and, and track it. And track, track it. Track how many conversations you're having. Exactly. Instead of So like literally if you send a text to someone, write down that you sent that text to them. Don't yes. just think about it and... And for, some, for a lot of people listening, they're going to think, this is, like, how, how am I going to fit this into my schedule? Trust me, it is worth tracking where your time yeah. is. Um, engaging with them on socials. Another thing you can control, if you're a musician, how much are you playing out live? You know, it doesn't mean you have to be playing arenas, but how much are you playing even on the street? Like, if, if you're a street performer, mm -hmm. um, start wherever you got to start. And you can control how much you're playing live. Um, do house shows, do, ask, you know, you know, maybe making phone calls. And at that rate, conversations tracked with potential people that could book you yep. would be a very, very great use of your time. Um, and then once you're at the shows and, and, and playing live, you can control, are you engaging those people and turning them into actual fans that you then have on your list? So do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so... Um well, definitely something you can track when you're actually at shows um, or industry events, whatever, um, is you can um, be looking at the number of people that you're converting to an email list or a text list or social media or, or even, you know, um, buying merch, a anything like that. This, this one's a little bit less specific um, to like, you know, what can I do with my time today? Um, but definitely anytime that you're at shows or in any sort of environment where it makes sense to promote yourself, um, the, the, the principle of what we're talking about right now is, you know, what kind of things can I do m mostly immediately that are trackable that can help me get towards these goals. And that's definitely something you can track is how many people am I actually getting on some sort of list or communication platform, uh, that enables me to, um, keep in contact with them as a fan to an artist. Yes, and the last couple things that you can control is how much are you posting, commenting, engaging on your socials. That's kind of a no-brainer. So, so, so make a goal. It. Make a goal every single day. Okay, so like you want to get big on Instagram, you want to get big on YouTube, whatever. How many how many videos are you going to make? How many posts are you going to make? How much how much are you going to engage with other people on that platform? And write it down. I'm going yeah. to find. 12 Instagram accounts every single day and I'm going to you know make it like engage in some degree on their most recent post or you know shout them out or like and I'm not necessarily saying that that is the greatest Instagram growth strategy in the world but I am saying what you need to do is come up with a goal and make it quantifiable and track it yes and and lastly how much quality content are you putting out how much mm -hmm. music are you putting out that's up to you Obviously, the goal is high quality. It's not quantity. 
Um, to have a lot of high quality is really the goal, but um, you are your own barometer for that. Is, is everything about your content um, you know, doing something for you in a positive way? If so, that's quality content. Mm-hmm. You'll eventually find over time what's quality in the eyes of your audience, but you can control how much of it you're putting out. And keep in mind that there's really no shame in um, needing to set the quality bar, bar higher. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of people who come through our Full Circle Music Academy and they're like, yeah, I'm trying this marketing tactic and this marketing tactic and it's not really working like I want it to. And sometimes just it, it's, it's the hardest reality to accept. Um, and it, it's not that anyone isn't, quote, good enough. It's just that the, the people who are having a lot of success, normally the amount of time and effort in practice um, and just the amount of hours that they've spent perfecting their craft and raising that quality bar has been so substantial. And most people who, quote, want the music dream um, just haven't had that that same level of practice at songwriting, practice at just their instrument, practice at booking shows, practice at all kinds of different stuff. Um, and a lot of times, so yeah, I mean, if you are in a situation where it's like, I'm trying this stuff and, you know, people don't seem interested in my music, whatever. Um, I mean, it's okay to have that conversation with yourself and be like, you know, is, is my quality bar high enough? And if it's not, it, it's okay to, to relax on the marketing front for a while and go in and focus on that quality bar and just exactly. dive in and just what can I do to just better myself? And then once you feel like you've improved that quality bar, go back out and then, you know, try some of these marketing tactics. Yeah, again. no amount of great marketing or promotion can fix crappy content. Mm-hmm. So that's what I want to leave people with. And if people want to dive in deeper to all of this, if, if this has kind of maybe whet their appetite a little bit and got their wheels spinning, what should they yeah. do next? So, I mean, I mean we, we've been talking for quite a while already, um, but I'm sure that you can kind of tell it feels like we've just scratched the surface of so many different things. Um, specifically things um, like, like just a lot of the basics between building a website, setting up an email list, um, you know, actually getting some promotional strategies together that will actually uh, cause fans to discover you instead of you having to do all the work constantly to go out and find everyone. Um, people have been asking for it, and so there is a marketing course that is going to be coming from Full Circle Music Academy uh, later this year. And so, you know, we talked about some specific tools in this video. We talked about, you know, some other things, and we're going to walk you through so much of that, like step-by-step video tutorials. It's going to be really cool. Um, so right now, uh, it is not yet available, but if you are interested in uh, learning more, go to musicmarketingtraining.com. That is where you want to go. There will also be a link right in the description below. Um, yeah, just if that's difficult for you for whatever reason, uh, just go to musicmarketingtraining.com and you can sign up for the wait list there. And, and here's a really cool thing. Uh, the way that we're modeling this course, we have some other really premium courses um, that rightfully so, um, they're super valuable. They, they do have a price tag that reflects that. Um, this course, um, we're, we're not 100% sure how the pricing model is going to be, but we can say that at the beginning of launching this, it's actually going to be free for those people who um, are on this wait list. Uh, so if that is something in, that interests you, if you would like to get a hold of this course that we're putting together, again, at no cost, um, I would highly recommend going to musicmarketingtraining.com and signing up for that waitlist. So that way you get access to that. Awesome. Musicmarketingtraining.com. I'm Seth Mosley. I've been here with Logan Crockett talking music marketing strategies. And uh, check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel as well. And lastly... One final reminder, head to musicmarketingtraining.com and get on that wait list where you can be the first to know about all this stuff. Hey, thanks for hanging with us on this YouTube video. We have an amazing course coming out and it's all about marketing. How can you get your music out to tons and tons of fans? If you want it, click here to get on the wait list and you'll be the first to know about it. And then if you're interested in seeing another awesome marketing video, click up here.